Hi everyone, Ash Nightingale here from Nightingale Guitars and today I'm going to share with you the reason that I struggled so much when I first started finishing guitars and what I do now to achieve a high level of finish on wood and metal, the materials that I use and also some of the finishing techniques. The reason that I struggled so much when I first started finishing guitars is because I wasn't using high quality enough materials and when I'm talking about the materials I'm talking about the abrasives I was actually using. So here I've got an example of some of the paper that I used to use uh, or I used to try to use to get high finish on wood or on metal and if you it's a perfect example if you break the paper like this you can see it forms a sharp edge along the break because the abrasive is in one hard layer across the surface and the the back the backing paper is quite stiff also so when you fold it you get a sharp edge forming along this corner so it doesn't matter how fine the abrasive surface is when you when you use that on the surface of the wood uh, you will create scratches. It doesn't matter if it's uh, 1200 grit or 1500 grit. If you've got that sharp edge, you're always going to create more scratches as you're sanding. So I found myself getting very frustrated working through the grits, you know, very meticulously and still getting deep scratches towards the end of my finishing process. So that is that was my initial struggle until I found uh, these papers. So mainly for the wood, I use a paper called Merca Carrot Flex. Um, uh, it's these ones here, and if you look at a little bit of it, you can see that the, the paper it's on is extremely flexible. And if you fold it, um, it doesn't cause a sharp edge on that corner at all. So uh, it's ideal for finishing wood to a high level and the grades the grits that i go through i have a 180 grit i have a 240 grit and then i have a 400 grit and i tend to go through those um, in order and meticulously check for sanding scratches from the previous uh, the previous round so that's what i use for wood and the paper that i use for uh, metal and I cannot stress enough how much this paper has revolutionized and changed my entire process when I've been doing uh, guitar setup work for people and working on my own guitars that I'm building uh, this paper has made life so much easier so this is called hopefully you can see that on the camera this is called stark matador um, silicon carbide waterproof so it's wet and dry paper and this is ideal i find this is ideal for fret work especially um, but also if you want to get a really uh, high finish on wood you can use it for that as well so i find i end up cutting it down into small squares like this and possibly wrapping it around a, a block. That's just an exa one example of how I would use it. But again, just the same as uh, the previous paper, it's on a very flexible, flexible back so you can easily fold it and you're not going to get any sharp, nasty, scratchy corners on there which are going to ruin any finish that you've achieved. So really can't, can't recommend this stuff enough. I just when I found this wet and dry paper, the Stark Matador, and uh, this wood finishing paper, the uh, Merca Carrot Flex paper, I found these two and I just haven't looked back. I haven't looked at another brand since. So that's it for the materials that I use and I can get a completely um, satisfactory high level of finish on everything now. So I'll move on to sharing with you some of the techniques that I use for finishing. And over the years, I've built up a selection of different sanding tools I've built myself. So 
uh, just basically different sanding blocks. So I've got one of these, which is just a big flat sanding block effectively for, I quite often use this for, you know, flattening off the sides of the guitar or various other things like that. Um, so you want to have a selection of sanding blocks, including hard, like on a wooden block. So I've got some of those um, on a softer cork block, so and different sizes. So of the cork, I've got a slightly bigger one and a smaller one. And then I've got this tiny little one like this, where I would just fold the paper up round like that and I would just trim these corners off so you end up with that sort of effect uh, and that is just really handy for getting right into intricate corners like that right into the heel uh, around the edge of the fretboard or details like that so little tiny sanding blocks that's the very smallest one that I've got absolutely tiny little thing can't actually remember what I was using that for, but uh, just I think it's got 150 grit abrasive on one side and um, 240 on the other, and I was using it for some really fine detail sanding. Uh, like a larger, flatter block again for flattening off the front or the back of a headstock. Um, it's good to have a uh, something big and flat some round ones so i've got some piece of dowel i think that's 25 mil dowel and that's something like 40 mil dowel and these are handy for uh, getting into the waist into the waist area of the guitar like that but again they're nice and flat across the length so it means you've got a nice flat area that you can get into those round curves there so i've got a couple of those different uh, different grades and different uh, sizes there handy yeah, another little small sanding block I've got there. And then I've got a couple of sanding sticks, which I've made. So that little sanding stick there, just a, an eight mil piece of spruce or something like that. And that one there is flatter, but I've angled back the edges on this one. And that's handy for uh, truing up the, you know, the face of a dovetail joint. So you can use that for the male and the female part of the dovetail joint. And it's really handy for just fine tuning that joint so it just perfectly fits in. So that's pretty much everything for today's video uh, in terms of all the methods that I use for finishing. All of the abrasives that I've mentioned today will be linked in the description below for your convenience. So check that out. Other than that, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. And if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I will catch you in the next video.